how do, how do I do it? How do we take this thing from being, you know, an exit idea to actually closing on the transaction? Yeah. So the, the way that I like to sort of set the stage for business owners who are looking to in, or thinking about implementing a, an ASAP transaction is I, I break it into four steps. The first step being, you know, is this a good fit for you? Uh, is this a good fit for where your company is? Is this a good fit for where your management team is? Um, is this a good fit financially? You know, we typically say that if you don't have around a million dollars in EBITDA, um, you know, the ESOP structure uh, is probably not the best fit for your company. Um, additionally, we, we look at size and we're saying, do you have at least 20 employees? Um, and that ties into some of the anti-abuse rules uh, under the Internal Revenue Code that are tied into uh, the S Corporation uh, ESOP structure. So as long as you have those things that, in, in place, the, the next step in that sort of initial stage is to determine whether or not you want to do this. Um, like Peter said, you need to make sure that you're not just doing this for the tax benefits. Uh, you're not just doing this because, uh, you know, the timeline for selling to an ESOP uh, is, you know, radically reduced from the timeline of selling the private equity or to a third party or some other third party. Um, so uh, ensuring that you have all those factors in place, the next step is to determine what structure to use, whether it's a minority ESOP transaction, whether it's a 100% ESOP transaction, whether or not you it do an S corporation ESOP transaction where you're not taking advantage of the tax deferral benefit, whether you're whether you're doing it as a C corporation transaction with the thought of using um, uh, electing 1042 treatment. Our team, our finance team, will look at your financial information, model those transaction structures out, um, and give you a pretty detailed report that will show what you can expect. Um, give you a preliminary indication of the value that you can anticipate in an ESOP transaction under these structures um, so that you can have an informed uh, decision uh, to go forward. Um, most, in most cases, once you get through that first step, you know, you're not really looking at, you know, you know, what can you probably get in a third party sale process. Um, however, fortunately, we have the ability with our, our, our multidisciplinary team and SASC SAP strategies to look at that third party sale process too in tandem with the feasibility study uh, assessment. The next step is the transaction. Um, if we get the green light, we, the, the business owners or business owners decide on a structure. Um, we uh, run a trustee, uh, ESOP trustee RFP process. Um, with the board of directors to help identify an ESOP trustee, um, you know, which is critical. You want an ESOP trustee, whether it's an individual ESOP trustee or an institutional ESOP trustee, um, that's going to be able to help you, you know, you know, help you know protect the ESOP beneficiaries down the road and ensure that they comply with the fiduciary duties, uh, someone that you can trust that will comply with fiduciary duties under ERISA. After that, then you negotiate the transaction um, with the ESOP trustee. That ESOP trustee is going to hire a financial advisor. Uh, that ESOP trustee is also, probably also going to hire an attorney to help negotiate that transaction. Um, the one sort of criticism uh, for a lot of folks is that, well, wait a minute, uh, who's paying for all these folks? Uh, and the, the answer is, you know, it's, it's the company. Um, that being said, um, ESOP transactions are uh, typically, you know, from a transaction fee standpoint, either uh, are typically less expensive or just as expensive as your third party sale process. So that's something to keep in mind there when you're you know, thinking, you know, when you are acknowledging the fact that you are paying for um, uh, the team that's buying essentially the, the company from you. Um, in addition to negotiating that trend, that, that that the uh, transaction, you're also possibly running a debt raise process concurrently with uh, the ESOP transaction and negotiation. Um, however, most companies, uh, when they're looking for senior financing to help fund an ESOP transaction, uh, they're often going with a legacy bank. Um, the last step is closing. Um, you know, after the ESOP trustee 
runs its process. Uh, it'll get a fairness opinion from its financial uh, financial advisor on the overall fairness of the transaction, and uh, which will opine as to whether it comports with the rules and regulations of ERISA. Uh, and and you know you get to a closing. Um, the, that fourth step I think is important, and I think you know Steve will touch on this about communication to his employees. After you implement the ESOP, after you get to a closing, there's a question as to well, what do we do now? Uh, we have this thing in place. You know, if it's private equity. You know what's happening. And, you know, yeah, it's 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 you know, it's like Black Sunday for the or, or Black Sunday for the Jets. Uh, everyone's getting cleaned out or whatnot, uh, and everything's getting turned over. Um, you know, it's in the sort of ESOP context, context, you know, context rather, it's completely different. Everything pretty much stays the same, uh, except for maybe you know, uh, bring on board a couple of independent directors depending on the structure of your transaction. Um, and so the key part of that is ensuring that you have an administration plan in place going forward, uh, and shortly after the closing, and then also ensuring that um, you know you figure out figure out a communication plan, which I know Steve will touch on uh, a little bit later here. Uh, with employees who really get the benefits of employee ownership. Uh, and some of the, you know, the, what we've seen in research demonstrate real value to the company outside of the tax benefits uh, in terms of sales, in terms of stability, uh, in terms of uh, job retention and the like.